So we've seen how to form cumulative distribution functions using a simple example with only 10 data points. And we've also seen, again using this example, that cumulative distribution functions and rank frequency plots are one and the same. In this video, we'll look at a more realistic data set, a much larger data set, and see what the cumulative distribution function looks like for it. So we'll go back to the example of word frequencies from Moby Dick. And then I'll also give a very quick tour of some other cumulative distributions for um, a variety of different phenomena that are suspected of being described by power laws. So recall that previously we've looked at the word frequencies for words in Moby Dick. And as part of that, we came up with this histogram. So the frequencies are here, and then the number of counts is on um, the vertical axis. And so what this means is that there are um, uh, around 7,500 words that appear once. And there are around 3,000 words that appear twice, and around 1,800 words that appear three times, and so on. So we made a histogram out of all of these frequencies. And that's similar to what we did in the uh, simple example of just 10 data points, is I made a histogram. So, and here only, the counts only went up to two. Here they go up much higher. And so you'll also recall that um, this histogram can plot it out much farther, out to 300, 400, 500, it keeps going. And we can make a log log plot of this. And we saw linear behavior over a pretty wide range. And this led us to suspect that the word frequency is um, distributed according to a power law. So now let's see what this data would look like if we did a cumulative distribution function. So I have one, one of those here. So here's the cumulative distribution function for word frequencies in Moby Dick. So it's the same data that was in this plot, just plotted differently. So recall I plot now for the cumulative distribution function, I plot rank against frequency. So there are 18,000 or so different words, and um, the smallest frequency is one, and so that's this point here around 18,000. So rank frequency plots, as we've seen, um, can never increase, they can be level or decrease. And that's what we're seeing here. I also um, asserted in the last videos that if a histogram, a probability, is uh, a power law, we'll expect the cumulative distribution function to also be a power law. And that means we'll expect it to look linear on a log-log plot. So let me do that. Here is same data as this, but now plotted on a log-log scale. And we can see that this is looking pretty linear. It's not perfectly linear. There is a little bit of curvature to it. Um, but certainly over a pretty, pretty wide region, um, this is nice and linear. And so we could um, figure out the slope of this and then use that information to estimate the exponent for the cumulative distribution function, which in turn we can use to figure out the exponent for the distribution function itself, the probability. So we'll talk about the best ways to do that. And in fact, the best way to do it, it turns out not to be to do what I just described um, in the next couple of videos. But for now, I just want to kind of get us used to looking at these sorts of plots. So a cumulative distribution function formed by this ranking procedure, we take a log log plot and we see um, if it has a reasonable chance of being a power law, we'll see something that looks linear over um, broad scales. And so this is a pretty common, very standard way of presenting data like this. The quantity of interest x here and then uh, the rank gives us a cumulative distribution function. 
So it turns out that there are a very large range of phenomena that are thought to be distributed or well described by power laws. There's far too many for me to cover them all. So I want to just show a couple of examples really quickly. And these are all taken from a really nice paper by Mark Newman called Power Laws, Pareto Distributions, and Zips Laws. And I'll put the, um, I'll put the citation for that here. And you can download the PDF that's in the additional resources section for this um, unit. And you can see higher quality versions of these figures and read much more about these data. Um, and in some cases, get your hands on the data itself. So um, recall these features of power laws that there's a very wide range and this long tail. So we might see um, a lot of phenomena that are very small. So there are lots and lots of words that are used only once or maybe only twice or three times in Moby Dick. But then um, that tail extends very, very far out here so that there's some words that are used 300 times, 500 times, 10,000 times, and so on. So here, um, this is all, these are all from, this, this is figure four in the paper by Newman. So these are all rank fre frequency or cumulative distribution plots. This is the one we've been looking at. This is word frequency for Moby Dick. Here are citations for scientific papers. There are lots and lots and lots of papers that are cited very few times, and then a, a few number of papers that are cited many, many times. The story is similar for web hits. There are lots and lots of web pages that get very few hits, and then a small amount, this long tail of more popular web pages. One sees similar patterns for books sold, many, many books that sell very little, but then um, a few books that sell many, many, many times. This is 10 million. Uh, similarly, for the number of telephone calls received in a day, earthquake magnitudes, there's lots and lots of small earthquakes, um, and then this long tail of larger earthquakes. Um, let's see, here's another one from geology. These are crater sizes. Um, I forget where. Let's see if I can look that up. Craters on the moon. So um, there are lots and lots of small um, craters, just like there are lots and lots of infrequent words, but then some very, very large craters. Again, this long tail. Um, peak intensity. This is peak intensity from gamma rays from solar flares. Um, this is also intensity, but not of gamma rays, but of wars. So there are lots of small wars. It seems weird to call anything a small war. I'm sure if you or your family was in it, it would not seem small. But anyway, um, lots and lots of small wars, and then this long tail of larger wars. And here's another one. All these plots start to look the same after a while. Um, this is net worth of individuals in US dollars, so lots of people with very little net worth, and then a longer tail of very, very wealthy. Um, this is name frequency. Um, some Lots of not popular names and then some very popular names. And similarly, uh, populations in cities. So there are lots and lots of examples of things that are suspected, phenomena that are suspected of behaving like a power law. Um, and again, I highly recommend this, the paper by Mark Newman. Um, well-referenced, very clear, so if you want to dig deeper, <clears throat> that would be a great place to start. But there's some questions. Um, what is the best way to estimate the exponent for a power law? Lots of things, this earthquake one is maybe a good example. That's the one here on the right. Um, it seems nice and linear here, but there's some region where it's not linear. So maybe we'd like to know, well, where does the power law behavior begin? Where is a linear region? How would we determine that without just kind of like making sort of a hunch or a guess? And um, are there other alternatives? Maybe these are reasonably well described by power laws, but there's something else that describes them even better. So in the next set of videos, we'll start looking at some of those uh, more subtle and difficult issues in statistics and inference.